Good morning, student. Now let's start our last topic of this chapter. I hope you understand all this apparatus uh, about all this apparatus. Now, in after this apparatus, what we need to take care in chemistry lab that we need to learn and we have to know about that. So, first topic: do not work alone in the laboratory. So, whenever if you are doing some chemical work in a chemistry laboratory your teacher have to be there you cannot do any work in laboratory alone so that is a first point second point always wear a lab coat in a chemistry laboratory it protects your clothes why because when we are doing some chemical reaction sometimes some chemical reaction when we heat it's come uh, coming out from the beaker because of heating process so because of that you can able your cloth can make dirty or your cloth spoil and maybe on your skin also it can come and uh, it uh, some mark and some stain create on your cloth so for that for protection from the chemical you need to wear a lab coat in a laboratory third one apparatus to be used in an experiment should be arranged neatly before beginning an experiment so whenever we are doing some chemical reaction to use after to use this apparatus so when we are using that apparatus apparatus we need to make it clean and neatly first we have to make it clean and then and make it arrange properly and then we can do experiment that is a most of the thing whenever we are doing something before that we are arranging everything whatever the things we are using in that work so that same thing is there fourth one a carefully follow your teachers instruction whenever you perform an experiment which means that whenever you are doing some chemical experiment whatever your teachers are instructing instructing that first you add some chemical in your test tube then you add that uh, solution into the beaker that type of instruction you have to listen carefully and then you have to perform that is a fourth one now fifth one only small quantity of the chemical should be used to carry out experiment which means that we are doing a chemical reaction in laboratory and in very small amount of the chemical only we can we have to use because we just need to know the what chemical reaction is going on only for that we require some chemicals so through that small quantity also we can able to find out the particular experiment so only a small quantity of the chemical should be used for the carried out experiment Six one hot objects should be handled with the attention and care, which means that some chemical reaction needs some heat through the Bunsen burner. So when we heat some chemical reaction, at that time we need to take care and some attention also how to be there when we are heating some chemical reaction. That's that is why whenever the teacher is instruct you particularly, you, you need to listen carefully to your teacher and then you have to do that experiment carefully. Next one, do not touch or taste any unknown substance or inhale any unknown gas directly. Which which means that when we are using, uh, when we are doing some chemical reaction, we cannot able to touch or taste directly to that substance and when some chemical reaction through definitely so many gases are uh, producing so that gases we cannot breathe in directly maybe it will poisonous maybe it will harmful to your body so for your taking care you need to know about this whenever so any chemical you cannot touch it directly and you cannot taste it next one after the experiment is completed the apparatus should be properly washed clean dried and put back in their respective place in a laboratory so after the finish our work after the complete our experiment 
for what we have to do we need to clean our place on whatever the apparatus are present on our place first we need to wash and clean and dry it and make it and arrange it properly in a particular places for example the reagent bottle Re for reagent bottle we have a self so we need to arrange that reagent bottle after using it into the self and the side self also there where we are putting some apparatus so whatever the place for the apparatus after the using it we need to clean it and then put it a particular place so that is also a good thing for the a good experience a good experiment next one do not throw hot concentrated acid into the sink directly hot concentrated acid now i don't know that you have a ever seen a hot concentration acid what is the meaning but i am giving you one example uh, at your home please do not try this i am just telling you uh, do not do alone just you know about this that for uh, in at your home in a in a washroom there is a acid bottle that your mother is using for cleaning purpose that is called a hot concentrated acid do not touch it uh, don't please don't touch that concentrated acid which is at your home but i am just giving you example that type of concentrated acid or present in our chemistry lab and we can not throw acid directly into your uh, into the sink why because the sink have a cold water and this is hot water when we wet the cold water and the hot concentrated acid mix together immediately uh, it it will blow out uh, it will not fire it will fire will be not there but it will harmful some gases are producing so uh, into the sink so make sure so that is happen so make sure that water is running into the sink so that when you throw away anything into it it is safely wash away so what you have to do when the concentrated acid is used and after the you want to throw that concentrated acid what you have to do you have to make it and you have to open a tap water tap and continuously water is running and then from in running water you if you add concentrated acid then it will be not harmful so you can tell your mother that mama just be careful when you are using that concentrated acid first no don't use directly you can take acid into the bucket full of water bucket and then use that what acid water to cleaning purpose okay i hope you understand this thing next one in case of accidental burn or skin contact with a corrosive chemical immediately wash the affected area with running cold water and reported it to your child, teacher which means that suppose uh, by chance uh, some uh, one drop of acid or some chemical is uh, coming on your hand and uh, touch your skin so at that time something burning feeling uh, burning things you will feel so at that time immediately wash your hand with the tap water and uh, don't be uh, don't be afraid of that at nothing uh, that much of harmful but something you will feel burn at that time just uh, add cold water over it over that particular area and then report it to your teacher immediately teacher will do a first aid next one when you have finished doing an experiment wash your hand with soap and dry them with a clean towel which means that uh, when you finish in your chemistry lab when you are wearing a lab coat in your lab coat i am always telling to my student when you are wearing a laptop in your laptop uh, uh, sorry in your lab coat a pocket have a cleaning uh, have a one towel to dry your hand you need it for particularly chemistry lab you need a one towel or one small towel or uh, we can say the handkerchief which you need to put in your lab coat pocket why why because when you have finished doing an experiment wash your hands with soap and dry them with a clean towel 
Next one, maintain a silence and discipline in a laboratory and concentrate on your experiment. So, why? Because we need to concentrate on our experiment whenever we are doing some experiment, we need to concentrate on, over, on it because some attention is needed for the some chemical reaction. So, if we miss that something will happen and you will lose something. So, that is why main, uh, need to maintain a silence and discipline for a concentration on, on a experiment. Next one, when using a test tube for heating, avoid pointing its mouth towards your fellow classmate whenever so some test tube when you are doing uh, some chemical reaction in a test tube when you are doing some heating process on a with a test tube so the test tube suppose this is a test tube uh, i don't have light now okay suppose this is a test tube and this is a closed part and this is open part and here when you are heating some here this is suppose uh, this is a burner suppose this is a burner and you are heating here so, this is this mouth then which is open, this mouth you have to point out uh, on a different side where no one standing. If you suppose uh, this mouth, suppose here one of the person, suppose the here the one of the person is standing and you are pointing out your uh, heating test tube he, this side. So, sometime that is happened that some chemical, chemical is coming out from the test tube and directly uh, it, it will harmful to the other person. So, you need to arrange your test tube like no one can, that's it. suppose this side is no one, this side no one. So, you have to do this. I will give you a, a, how it is look. So, this is a burner. Suppose this is a burner. So, here it is a test tube. This is a test tube that through and holder. This is a test tube holder. And handle. Now, some chemical reaction is going on and you are heating something, you are ha handling and this is open mouth of the test tube, okay, open mouth of the test tube. So, you need to point this one on that direction where no one standing, okay. Suppose you are pointing out this side, so suppose this side some students are standing and you are pointing out this side where no one is there, there is no one on this side. So, you need to point. So, maybe sometime it is happened that some chemical are coming out very fastly. So, it will go this side, not this side where those other students are standing. So, there it is. When using a test tube for heating, avoid the pointing its mouth towards your fellow classmate. So, you need to avoid this thing. So, just need to be careful. Next one, do not throw broken glass apparatus or use filter paper in a sink throw them in a dustbin sometime what happened when we are doing some chemical reaction and some glass apparatus broke by make suppose it will be uh, fall so and it will it will broke so the broken glass apparatus you cannot throw into the sink because it will jam the sink then the filter paper the filter paper that is a one type of paper through that we can filter the uh, some chemical chemical so, that filter paper after using it one time we can use that filter paper. So, after using it we need to throw it into the dustbin. We cannot throw into the sink because of through the running water it went, go into the sink and then sink will be jammed. So, for that, for that precaution for whatever, whatever the uh, app, broken apparatus and the filter paper and the other material which you need to throw it, throw it into the dustbin. So, these are the precautions student that you need to learn very properly. It is very important for exam point of view. So, any 5 precautions you can remember, you can memorize for exam point of view. So, that is it for today. Other things I will explain in a class.